Hey, Abundant Living Family, what's going on? Welcome to church, man. We're so excited. So excited to be man. here. I'm Mark McGaffin, one and of the I'm, pastors here. I'm Cruz Ramirez, one of the pastors here, man. And we're just excited to be joining you wherever you're watching today, wherever you're going to church today. We're excited for you to be a part of this, man. Yeah, and it feels a little bit different, right? A little bit. Man, I hope wherever you're watching today, you have plenty of hand sanitizer. Probably some toilet paper. Uh, I was out of toilet paper for a couple weeks already, so I was in trouble before it even started. Oh my gosh. Hey, but seriously, uh, we're super excited that you are taking time to meet and have church. You know, that's what the Bible teaches us. No matter what the, the timing looks like in culture, society, whatever's going on, Jesus teaches us don't forget about meeting to have right. church. And today, the meeting might feel a little bit different. You're meeting us, maybe you're at the gym, you're meeting us by listening in yeah. your car, maybe you're meeting us together with your family in your living room. Whatever that looks like, the meeting might be the same, but the presence of, the meeting might be different, but the presence of God is the same. And yeah. so, you know, today worship is going to be incredible. Our church service today is going to be amazing, right? It's going to be incredible. This is a cool thing. As we gather, no matter where you're at, the presence of God is promised as we come together. Yeah. And today we're going to have a full church experience right where you're at. We're going to have worship. Worship is going to be so, so good today. Yeah, and we want you to go all the way in on worship. So if you're at your car, go ahead and pull over, raise your hands up. Come if you're on. in the living room, go ahead and just have a praise party. Seriously, this is the time you can sing along as loud as you can. You know what, yeah. though, Mark? Yeah. As, as I'm thinking about this, man, I can't wait to go back and watch this and be a part of this experience with my family. Yeah. We're going to get our daughters together, Come man. On. Yeah. And we're going to go full extension in our living room. We're going to sing at the top of our Let's lungs. Go. And the truth is, man, Jesus inhabits the praises of his people, That's right? That's true. And so you can have a praise party party right wherever you're at. Maybe you're singing, you got your AirPods in, and you're singing yeah. out loud Just as you're doing it. your dumbbell raises, yeah, whatever it is. It. Worship is going to be absolutely incredible. You know, today we're going to pray together. Yeah. You know, if ever there were a time that we needed prayer, it's right now. Absolutely. Right? We're going to pray together. We're going to receive communion we're together. We're receiving communion, so I want to encourage you now to go ahead and go to your kitchen, wherever you're at, and grab some communion elements so you can participate with your church family. Yeah, maybe you've got the communion packs. If you don't, it's all good. We don't have to be religious and legalistic about it. You can grab right. a piece of bread, yeah. maybe like a little frosted mini wheat. I don't know what it is, right? But grab like a little cereal and some kind of a juice. Maybe you've got grape juice, cranberry juice. Yeah. Maybe you've got a Capri Sun. Do what you got Come on, do. Capri Sun. Hey, get the Son of God. <laughs> anyway, we're, whatever it is, we want you to join in communion. You know what makes communion powerful is the faith in what Jesus did for us, right? Yeah. And so we're going to take time together today to rally around and gather around the faith that by Jesus' stripes, we're healed, yes. and that together we're still living the abundant life. No matter what society looks right. like, no matter True. what viruses happen, what no, what no matter what, we're gathering around the blessing of the abundant life that Jesus promised us. You yeah. know, and so church is going to feel the same today. You know, we're going to receive communion. You know, we're going to take time to give today. You know, what an opportunity that even if we're not together in the same building, we're still together in the same spirit. And right. can I just remind you that the spirit of our church is a generous spirit. Yeah, part of our our DNA is extreme generosity, and come on somebody, how many of y'all know that this is a little bit of an extreme time, but extreme times calls for extreme generosity, you know what I'm talking about? Right. And so, um, I would encourage you to every moment of our service today, gather your family together, wherever you're at, and just take it, take every moment serious, you know? We're also going to hear the word today. Who's preaching Yeah, today? we have Pastor Charles Let's on deck go. today. The big I'm telling you, building. today's message is going to encourage you. It's going to give you hope. It's a powerful, powerful word, and I want to encourage you. Pull out a, out a notebook, your phone, Absolutely. take notes. This is, this is the hope that we all need right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Man, we want you to engage as best as you can, right? So shout us out on Instagram. Post, post the notes from the message. Right. Tag people on it. Put it on your stories. Put it on your Facebook wall. Everywhere you can. Talk about what God is doing at our church. We may not be in the building, but we're still right. the church. We're still together. Absolutely. And right now we're getting ready to head into praise and worship. So before we do that, we just want to open with the word of prayer. Pastor Cruz, would Absolutely. you lead Absolutely. Come us? on. Hey, right wherever you're at, would you take a moment? Let's pray together. If you're able to, close your eyes, bow your head, maybe even raise your hands. If you've got your kids with you in the living room, why don't you guys come together, lay hands on each other, hug each other. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in this time, Lord. Your word says where two or three would gather to celebrate you and put their trust in you, that your promise is that you're there with them. And so, Lord, wherever our church family is listening and watching this church experience, Lord, I thank you that your promise is yes and amen, that you're right there with us, Father. And wherever you are, your presence brings us peace, 
power, security, and protection. Lord, thank you that today church is going to be incredible. Thank you for the testimonies, God, of life change, of bodies being healed, of hearts being settled, of anxiety and depression and fear being driven far from us. Lord, thank you that faith is stirred on the inside of us. And we just declare over our lives, Lord, faith over fear. Yes, thank you, God. Jesus, for everyone who's going to say yes to you for the very first time today. We thank you that you're going to be glorified. And in all that happens today, thank you that your goodness is going to be felt. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, enjoy worship. Can't wait to see you more at church. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. All of you who are joining us across the screen, we thank you so much for being here today. We're going to praise our God together. So come on. Why don't you join us with your hands? Come on, we sing. I raise an hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. Weapon. 
And we thank you for your peace. We thank you for this stillness we get to have in your presence. We believe you're our good shepherd. So we draw near in this moment as you draw near to us. So have your way. We love you, Jesus.
Abundant Living, thank you so much for joining us for our online church experience. These are unusual times and I just wanna take a moment to say thank you for staying connected to church. Now more than ever, we need each other and we need to stay connected to each other. Listen, over the next few minutes, we're gonna take some time to pray. We're also gonna take communion. So I wanna give you a chance to go grab something so you can join with me as we take communion. Maybe you're thinking, you know what? I don't have a communion cup. That's okay. Just get whatever you've got at home. You can grab some crackers, some bread, some juice, some water, whatever you've got, but don't miss this moment. There is power in the act of taking taking communion and we're gonna do that. Now over the next few minutes, while you're grabbing your communion, I just wanna share with you, I wanna remind you, look, we're not going anywhere and it is important that we stay in this season together. Like I said, we need each other more than ever. We need to stand together in faith. And how are we going to do that? Well, let me share with you. Every day we're going to have a moment where you can join us via live stream or on the app through prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer moves mountains. And you know what? This is a time for us to rise up in prayer together. I also want you to know that we we want to hear from you. If you need prayer or something specific and unusual, usual is going on in your life, please email us, please direct message us, send us something on Instagram or Facebook, whatever you use. Let Just share with us so that our staff and our family, we can stay connected and pray for you. You know, we are a church built on faith and we are going to walk through this season armed with faith, believing and trusting that God is our source of delivery. Amen. All right, let's join together. Let's go ahead and get our communion ready. I'm not just going to pray over the coronavirus situation. I also want to pray for whatever need is going on in your life or someone you know. Father, today, I just lift up each one of these incredible people that are connecting with us right now. Father, I know that you know the very details that are going on in their lives. Father, your word assures us that you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. And when he died, he paid the price so that we could be taken care of. Your word says that when he died on the cross, that he bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we are are healed. Your word also assures us that you are our source of supply, that you are there to meet our needs. Father, you desire for us to be well taken care of. So Father, today we just stand in faith together, believing that you are moving in each one of these lives, that you are moving in each one of these situations, that you are a God of miracles and you are a God who is walking before us, behind us, and next to us. You are standing with us and you are fighting for us. Now, Father, today, in accordance to what your word tells us, in remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross, we eat this bread declaring that through the broken body of Jesus, we are healed. Now, if you would prepare your cup. Oh, Father, today your word assures us that through the blood that Jesus shed, that we have a new covenant through Christ. And that covenant says that God is on our side, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that we stand in relationship, in partnership with Jesus, with a promise of his love and a hope that never fails. So today we drink this blood in remembrance of what he did. Now just join with me for a moment in faith. Father, I thank you that we can stand trusting and believing that what Jesus did on the cross was complete. It is more than enough for whatever we are facing. And Father, today by faith, we declare, we declare that the finished works of the cross rule and reign over our lives, over our families' lives, over our city, over our nation, and over the world. As your children, we have this promise and we claim it to be ours today. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah uh. 
Abundant. I hope you're having a great day. I know we're all making adjustments to what's going on in our lives right now, but thank you so much for joining us at church. Even though it's online, I'm praying that the presence of God is in your house today or wherever you are watching us. I believe that God's presence is honoring us seeking Him. You know, the Bible says when we draw near to God, He draws near to us. So my prayer is, is that you and your family is getting as much out of church today as you would if we had been able to gather. I hope you know we love you, we miss you. Man, I miss being able to say hi to so many of you and being able to pray with you and hug you, but I can't wait to get back to once we can come back together. And by faith, I believe that'll be sooner rather than later. We know that God is greater than this and we are standing on faith over fear. And, um, but again, thank you so much. How many of you love the Lord today? I know you do. And how many of you are so grateful that no matter what, God is on your side today? Amen. You know, I'm here after we had just had an incredible, incredible few minutes of worship to talk to you about your giving. And let me just read to you a great scripture out of 2 Corinthians 9 in the message translation. It says, the most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals. So God has given us seed and we sow that seed and that seed becomes the provision for our future. Listen, I know that we're all facing uncertain times right now and there's question marks, there's answers, but you know what? Let's not give up on our God. Our God has given us seed to sow and it's time to step out in faith and to continue to sow our seed, believing that our God is with us, he's gonna provide for us, that he is greater than this interesting situation we're all facing. And we thank God that we are in it, but we are not of the world. And we believe that he is our source and our supply. I know many of you, God has gotten you through uncertain times before. And that was partially because of your generosity. So let's be generous today. It's gonna be different, and I'll explain to you that in a moment. Let me read you the rest of the scripture. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way. You know, the beautiful thing about God is that through our giving, he takes care of our entire lives. Think about that. Prosperous and wealthy in every way. That doesn't just include in your finances, but God wants you to be prosperous and wealthy in joy, prosperous and wealthy in faith, prosperous and wealthy in love. He wants your family to be taken care of. And I'm believing that he is going to rise up in our lives right now in these coming weeks. And we as a church are going to see the hand of God move in our church and in your lives, and we are gonna be taken care of. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be taken care of. Let's not give into fear. Let's not give into panic. We are children of God, and we walk in faith over fear. So let's give today. I know many of you would have been giving this weekend. You would have been giving your tithe and offering. And so let's execute that now. Of course, it's gonna be different. We're gonna give via text to give. We're gonna give online at alfc.com backslash giving. You can see the information on the screen as I'm talking about it. I know for many of you, that's not your regular uh, form of giving, but you know what? Maybe it's time to just switch. Many of you give cash or checks. Maybe it's just the time to switch to your online giving. So get out your phone. The first time you do it, it takes a few seconds. After that, it literally takes you as long as it would a text message. So I hope you'll give today. Let's, like we do every week, let's all do our part. God just asks us to do our part. So I'm asking you to do your part today so the church can keep moving forward. We're gonna be in the community this week trying to help people as much as we can. We've already called the food bank to see if we can get food to help kids that may not be getting food at school this week. We'll be letting you know more about things. We're working with the blood services center to see if there's some way that we can help promote a blood drive and we'll be talking to you. We're not gonna let our generosity stop just because of what's going on in the world. So give today. Again, you can see the information on the screen. Text to give, give online. We thank you so much for your faithfulness in honoring God in your giving 
and we thank God for what he's going to do. Let's pray. Father, we believe today as we give that you are more than enough. We believe that you are our source and our supply. Father, we thank you that you are with us in this time. And we believe, God, that you are gonna provide. You're not just gonna provide for us financially, but you're gonna provide for us spirit, soul, body, relationally, with our kids, with our family, on our jobs. God, we thank you that you are in control. You never leave us, you never forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to remind you real quick that you can text to give or give online at any time of day. God bless you. Let's go into the service with Pastor Charles. Hi, I want to thank you for joining with us this weekend for this very unique and special weekend. I'm very sorry that we were not able to gather together in our houses. It was our plans, what we purposed to do. But as you know, on Friday, uh, our city leaders uh, asked us to not gather together in huge numbers. And of course, uh, we want to uh, abide with them and do what they feel is best. And so I'm sad that we weren't able to gather together Yet, I'm very thankful that we are able to gather together like this. I'm thankful that the internet is available to us. You know, 20 years ago, I could not have communicated with you like this, right? It it wouldn't have been possible, not in a church setting. And I was reminded when I was thinking about that in Colossians 1 verse 16, it says that all things were made by him and for him. So we're going to use this. Now, please listen. None of us knows what the future events are going to be, but it is possible, maybe even profitable, that we're going to be having church like this for a while. So I want to encourage you today to not become distracted and complacent towards your relationship with God and His church and our church. Now listen to me. Please hear what I have to say to you today. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible says, they that gather together before the Lord. Now, we're not able to gather together as we usually do, but we can gather together this way. And over the next few days, we're going to be bringing you more opportunities to gather together with us online. I believe that difficult times require difficult measures. Amen? And that we're going to bring the Word of God to you in so many different ways over the next several weeks as this difficult time works its way through our country and eventually passes away from us. So let's take advantage of this. Let's think about this. And let's remember that we are promised in Isaiah 40 that every time we gather together before the Lord, what does he say would happen? We would renew our strength. We would renew our strength. We all need that right now. We need our strength renewed. Number two, that we would mount up with wings as of eagles. That we would run and not be weary, walk and not faint. So you need that. I need that. So let's gather together at every opportunity and join together. I want to share with you today what I feel is a very important word for all of us. I want to begin in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, where the Apostle Paul says, in the last days, perilous, dangerous, difficult times will come. Now we know the last days began on the day of Pentecost, and these are difficult times that we're in. These are not the first difficult times since the day of Pentecost, and they won't be the last. And so here we find ourselves. And by these difficult times, we see a lot of confusion in our world, in our nation today, a lot of confusion. We see a lot of fear, anxiety, panic, chaos, just, I think, almost like craziness. I mean, what's with everybody buying up all this toilet paper for crying out loud? You know, I mean... It's almost as if people think that if they wrap themselves in it, somehow it's going to keep the virus away. Come on, man. Let's all calm down, right? 
but yet we're living in this. And I think all of that can be defined as darkness and darkness seems to be all around us. Yet, I believe that you and I, as individuals, as families, and as a church family, can be and will be a light into this darkness. I believe that this can be and will be a great time for us to let his light shine into the darkness that we are experiencing in our community. In Isaiah chapter, in Isaiah 60, the 60th chapter, verse 1, 2, and 3, we read an amazing statement that God made regarding the New Testament church. In chapter 59, the Redeemer is speaking, of course, the Lord Jesus, and he's speaking to us and helping us to see what God's will is going to be for us in the world once the kingdom of God has come. And that is the time we are living in now. And in verse one, he says, arise, shine, arise, shine, for your light is come. Listen to that. Your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He's not talking about something that did happen. He's not talking about something that's going to happen. He's speaking about my life and your life right here, right now, at this time in our community, in our nation, and in our world, that he wants us to arise and shine. Now, please make note of these words. This is very important for us as we live in this period that we're in right now. The word arise means stand up. Stand up. He's saying to you and me as the church, stand up. It also means be valid, endure, strengthen, get ready, be victorious. Now that's God's statement over you and me and our church. He wants us to stand up. He wants us to be valid or to be relevant to our community. He wants us to endure and to strengthen, to be strengthened and to strengthen and to be victorious. And he says, arise, shine, for your light is come. So the light of God's word is on us. We don't have to pray for it. We don't have to look backwards longingly. It may be something that happened years ago. Oh, if we, no, no, right here, right now, you and me. He said, your light is come. The word light means good fortune, but listen, victory, your victory is come, guidance. It means deliverance and favor. My family God has placed on us this great promise, this great reality of victory, of favor, of deliverance, of guidance that he has placed upon our lives. He continues, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Again, look at the verb tense, is risen, present, present tense, right here, right now, your life, my life. The glory, the word glory means honor and majesty. His honor and his majesty is on us. And then he continues in verse two. For behold, look and see the darkness. It says the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But, but God says, yes, there's darkness. There's darkness going to come upon the earth. The word darkness there means disorder, confusion. Listen to this, uncertainty. Is that not what we're living in right now? This time of uncertainty. I started off telling you today that I can't tell you when we'll gather back together here in our physical houses of, of worship. But we will, it will come again. God is going to give us the victory we are praying every day and asking you and encouraging you to join us online. Every day we're praying 
and doing our part spiritually while our government and our leaders and our medical health people are doing what they can in the natural. So we're attacking this enemy from both ends and God is going to give us the victory. But we cannot live in and walk by and be dominated by fear. Let's see what God says to us. He says, yes, there's a darkness that covers the earth. Uncertainty, confusion, disorder, gross darkness. The word gross darkness means it's like a cloud over people's lives. Can I just offer you something to to do? And it's really helped me. Don't listen to all of the myth and all of the rumor and all of the speculation and all of the stuff that people are saying. You know what? Go to the CDC website and read about this virus and see what it says. And you're going to be, you may be shocked about what it has to say, right? First of all, it is not a death sentence for everybody that gets it. My family, it's not. Now, I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to ignore it. No, it's not. It is especially dangerous to the elderly that have underlying health conditions. But quite honestly, family, those are the same people that are susceptible, really dangerous to the flu or other things that may go on. Again, I'm not making light of this virus. I'm not. I know it's here. I know. But it's also not a death sentence. All right, so let's quit listening to this rhetoric that's going on. Now, even if we hear it, we need to make sure we're hearing faith. Can I get a good amen today? And that I couldn't hear you there. I said, can we get a good amen there? I heard you, thank you. So that we have that work in our lives and we need to see who we are, right? Because look what he says. He says, but the Lord shall arise upon you. So there's darkness in our world, uncertainty. But God says, I've got a thing for you. I've got a purpose for you. And the Lord is going to arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. The word arise there means that the Lord will shine forth and break out through you, right? And then in verse three says, and the Gentiles shall come to your light. The word Gentiles means people that don't have a covenant with God, don't have a relationship with God. My family, what a great time for us to think about and believe for God's light to shine through us. And that light, right? The victory, the guidance, the deliverance, the favor to shine through us that we go into our homes and go into our neighborhoods and go back into work and go around and that we be people of victory, right? And let's be clear today. Let's not be people of judgment. Let's be clear today. God did not send this virus. I want to be clear about that, right? The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Do we all agree today that that's what this virus is doing? Stealing, killing, and destroying, right? So who did it come from? Didn't come from God. Let's be clear about that today. And let's not go out into our community and tell people, this is a judgment from God because of this or that. You know what? Please don't do that. Please don't ruin the opportunity that God has given the rest of us to be a light into the darkness, to bring people a sense of peace and victory and joy and help and assure them and pray with them, right? Please, let's not go crawl up in our corners and be afraid and be ruled by fear because here's here's the additional danger that we're going to be ruled by fear now and that spirit of fear is going to get on the inside of us. And when this is gone, that fear is going to remain and it's going to dominate your life for the rest of your life and dominate your family. So let's see what God has promised us, what he has said to us, right? And he continues. He said, and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. The word kings there means individuals with power and authority. And the word brightness means to the radiance. The radiance of what? Of God's light, of God's word, of God's promise. It has been said that a scared world 
needs a fearless church. I believe that. I believe our community is going to turn its eyes towards us as a church. And they need us to be fearless. Back when our nation was facing a much greater potential catastrophe, the beginning of World War II, our president, Dr. President Roosevelt said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. I believe that statement holds true even today. Our greatest enemy today is fear. Fear to where we begin to make choices and do things out of fear. Now is the time for faith, not fear. You have been taught God's word. God's word is in you. Now we need to become what we believe. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Our families, our co-workers, our neighbors need a voice of faith in this time of so many voices of fear and panic and chaos. Let's each of us decide to become and to be a voice of faith in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our community. Matthew eleven twelve says, The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. I believe that we need to be aggressive in our believing. Not foolish, but aggressive. We need to be careful. We need to be aware of what's going on around us. But we also need to be aggressive in our believing that God is delivering us, that God is going to protect us, that God is going to bring an end to this curse of this virus worldwide. Not just in El Paso, not just in America, but worldwide. So I wrote down some things that I want to share with you. How can you and I be the light? How can we be the light? If you have a pencil and paper there, write it down. Number one, no fear here. Say that, no fear here. Reject fear. Remember, sickness, fear, panic, Don't flee from fear. They flee from faith. So me becoming more fearful is not going to cause the fear that's attacking me to leave. It's actually going to draw more fear to me. So let's choose faith, not fear. Number two, believe this promise, Romans 5.20, that where sin does abound, the grace of God will much more abound. Jesus paved the way for us and for others to go to the throne of grace. So let's go. Hebrews 4, 16, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But let's not go by ourselves. Let's show other people. Let's let our light shine. Let's tell other people Let's go together. Let's pray together. Let's go to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in this time of need. Let's go. Let's expect it. Let's believe God for it. Number three, let's be the church. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Let's be salt and light in our world. Let's be the church. Number four, remember, we are people of faith. We are people of faith. Now look, I don't know, but it's possible that at some point in this, all of us may be home for a couple of weeks with our kids. So can I just encourage you today, let's be careful what we say around them. Let's not raise a generation of fearful, anxious, scared children. Let's not do it. 
Let's not sow that into their little hearts. Let's be people of faith. Number five, remember Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hey, speak life. Speak safety. Speak protection. Speak health. Speak favor. Speak victory. Speak it. Declare it. Speak God's promises. Speak all that. Number six, care about the people around you. Call people. Check on the elderly that may be in your neighborhood. Check on them. Make sure they're doing okay. Maybe you might need to feed some kids around you because, you know, school's been closed for a while. And a lot of kids, the only food they get is what they get at school. So maybe, maybe, maybe you can deliver some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to some kids. Let's be the church. Let's be that. Let's stay strong. Number seven, Proverbs, I mean, Psalm 23, 4. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. My family, we will get through this. We will get through it. And let's determine right now that when we come out, we're going to come out in victory with fruit, strong in him, with protected hearts, letting our lights shine all around us. How can we be the light? How can we do it? We are the church and we must be carriers of faith. We are the church and we must be carriers of faith. God has given you, listen to this statement. God has given you the measure of faith and no virus can take it away from you. This virus cannot reach in and yank faith out of your heart. God has put faith in you. So let me summarize these seven points into three points. Number one, how can we be the light? Number one, pray faith. Pray faith. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Stay connected to our church so we can stay strengthened together. Join us daily for prayer online and on our church app. Join us daily for prayer. We have a new prayer every day that we're doing specifically to combat spiritually this virus. We have weapons that God expects us to use. We cannot stand on the sideline as Christians and wring our hands. We need to step in and do our part while the medical people and the government and, you know, let's have confidence in those people, okay? While they're fighting there, we need to join the fight with the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we're coming on every day, and we're spending five to seven minutes in prayer, all of us joining together, all of us speaking together, and fighting this from the spiritual standpoint. So let's do that, right? Let's pray faith. Number two, let's speak faith. Again, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Let's speak faith. Watch what you say. Watch what you say about yourself, about your family. Be careful again around your kids. And can I just say this to you? My family, this is no time for politics. This isn't about Democrats and Republicans. No, this is about Americans and this is about the world. And this is about the church and the kingdom of God and us doing what God would have us to do. Speak faith, pray faith. And the third one, show faith. Faith without works is dead, the Bible says. 
Let's continue to have acts of love and kindness coming out of our lives. You know, that act of kindness may be encouraging somebody and telling them what you know about the promises of God and the power of the name of Jesus and the power of communion in your life. I encourage you to be taking communion at home as a family and declaring the power of the blood of Jesus over your house and your family. It's time for the church to be the church, to practice what we have been taught, to become what we believe. So I would say this to you. Fear is going to get us nowhere. It's not going to make becoming more afraid. It's not going to make this virus leave. Becoming more afraid is not going to give you peace in your home. We need to stand up to the fear and declare God's promises over our life. My family, Psalm 91 is still in the Bible. Get it, read it, believe it, stand on it, declare it over yours and your family, declare it over our city. But fear is not the way to go. Panic is not the way to go. But pastor, it's real. People may get it. Yes, they may. But go do your research. Go do your homework. Don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of it. You know, I read, and I may not get the numbers exactly right, so don't send me an ugly email, all right? I'm trying to help people. That You know, there's like 100,000 cases of this worldwide, but 70,000 of those people are already over it. They're already over it. Now, no one looks forward to getting ill by any means. But again, let's not be afraid. Let's stand in faith. Let's be people of light. Let's not join the cloud of darkness. Amen. It's the National Day of Prayer. And I want us to join together as believers, with believers all across America, believing today and praying. So if you would, right where you are, would you lift your hands towards heaven? Let's get, we're gathered together. The Lord is in our midst. Let's come to God, our loving Father. And let's believe today. And let's stand together in faith with Christians all across America. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today as your children, as believers, as people who choose faith over fear. And we pray today, united with millions of Christians across our nation, as we reunite together in prayer, in faith, on this national day of prayer. Father, we pray that you give our leaders, our president, and all those fighting this in the natural, that you give them wisdom, that you give them guidance, that you give them clarity, that you give them real insight as to what they can do from the natural. And Lord, we know that every good gift, and that would include medicine and vaccines and all the other things that they're doing, those come from God. So we ask you today, Lord, to give them wisdom and clarity and understanding there. Lord, we pray for our medical people and the first responders, those people there on the front line. We pray that you protect them and help them and guide them and strengthen them as they fight this right there in the hospitals and clinics. And we thank you for it. Lord, give the researchers that key wisdom that'll create the vaccine. You know how to kill it. You know, how to, you know what the vaccine needs to be. And we ask you today and we receive from you the wisdom being downloaded into those people that are working on this. And Lord, we pray today for our leaders locally, 
that you lead them and guide them and help them. Lord, we pray over our city today. God, we ask you today, and our declaration is, yay, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort us. And you will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Our cup will run over. Surely goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Though right now we know we're meeting online like this, we're going to get back together. For we believe today that you are giving us a victory. And God, we ask you today, smite this virus from heaven. Cause it to fall to the ground. It has exalted itself against the church, against humanity, who you love. And we ask you today to smite it. We ask you today, Father, to stretch forth your mighty hand against it. And we believe in the name of Jesus that we're going to see a supernatural occurrence here. And that this is not going to do what the devil wants it to do. It's not going to accomplish what he wanted it to accomplish. And that we're going to stand and we're going to be free and people are going to recover and you're going to protect us and you're going to end this thing. That you from heaven, Father, as we move against it in the natural, you will move against it in the spiritual. This is a weapon formed against us and it shall not prosper. And we thank you for it today. God, we pray and thank you for your restoration, for your health, your cure, your love, your strength, your compassion. And we believe that all of that is focused on our nation, on our world, and that we will see the light shining through the darkness and we will be the light shining into the darkness in our community. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Say it with me. In Jesus' name. One more time. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for joining with us today. Thank you for letting me come and speak into your heart. Keep watching our website. Keep watching our church app. We'll keep you up to date. And remember that every day, seven days a week, we have continual prayer every day, a new prayer every day that we are praying and standing. We're going to be bringing you more opportunities to join together with us and hear the good word of God and allow the word. But all that's going to be brought to you through the website and through the church app. So join together, stay in touch. If you need prayer, let us know. All right. And, and we want to pray with you and stand with you and believe God. You're not alone. We're still the church. We're still here and we're still fighting. And we're going to come out the other side. Amen. And we're going to come out fruitful and strong and victorious. And we're going to bring people with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. God bless. Choose faith over fear. Hey, what an awesome experience oh, here Epic. online today as we Epic. gathered together for church. It was, I don't know about you, but I am over fear. Over fear, Pastor man. Charles' message today was incredible. Full Faith of hope. Fear. Let's just say, what are, what are our takeaways that we could... So here's the, here's the three big handles, the three big takeaways. Number one, you've got to pray faith. Pray let's it. stop praying the problem yeah. and let's start praying the promises Absolutely. of God. Pray faith. Speak faith, man. we got to speak life. Speak, faith. speak life. Be the word of life. Be a breath of, a breath of fresh air wherever yeah. you're at, right? Yeah. And you got to show faith. you got to show you got to show it. you got to be the light. And there's 
there's some, there are several ways that together as a church family we can show our faith. You know, the right. easiest way is uh, you can show your faith on your social media platforms. I want you to know that you all are influencers. And so you can show right. your faith by sharing this service, by sharing the takeaways, the truths, what it did for you. Uh, well, you can keep showing your faith by praying. Yeah. Right? You know, it's National Day of Prayer. We prayed in church today, but we can continue to pray. You know, one of the things that I love about our church is that every time we gather, we pray together for our leadership in our yeah. country. We pray for our country. So let's do that, yeah? Let's get our friends together. Let's gather with our family, whatever, and just pray together. Let's keep praying that God brings a swift cure yeah. and a swift resolution to this whole situation that's happening in the world. Yeah. And let's just keep showing faith through all of the places that we have influence. And I you think know? that's a great thing we can take into our week is that, it's not just we're praying here on Sunday, but prayer should be our first response, Absolutely. not our last result. So no matter if you're what you're doing with your kids, your job, let's pray and keep on praying. I agree, Mark. 100%. And secondly, I think that we need to be paying attention to our social media accounts to keep up with what's happening here at church with upcoming service times, as well as things that the church is doing, our church is doing to uh, reach out to our totally community do. during this time. Totally. Do. And spoiler alert, really quick, our church is going to be doing some really cool stuff yeah. online and just really in the community because we're not going to stop being the church. Y'all know that, right? Right? We are the church, yeah. and we're not going to stop being that. And so you want to stay in touch and stay connected with everything that we're doing. So make sure you're turning on your notifications on the app, on yeah. your Instagram, on Facebook. Make sure you're connected, all right? Hey, listen, we love you guys so much. Thanks for having church yeah. with us Thanks today. Thanks for joining us for church. And how yeah. amazing was, it was amazing. this? It was, awesome. it was different, but not too different. At all. It's so great. Hey, have an incredible week. We love you guys. We'll love see you. you soon. We'll see you.